You knew the world would not be the same. A few people laughed. A few people cried. Laughed. Most were silent. A few people cried. Most people were silent. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty and to impress him takes on his multi-armed form and says, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that one way or another. Oh, wait. That's not in this book. This is the steel manual. But true and relevant nonetheless. What you just heard were not my words, but the eternal, timeless words of one Robert Oppenheimer. Those words echo down through the generations. I want you to watch again the face of this man, this time without the sound. What was so haunting Oppenheimer was an event that occurred 75 years, one month, and nine days ago as of the recording of this video. That event was a singular moment in human history, what is often referred to as the Trinity Test. On July 16, 1945, in the desert of New Mexico, humanity released the terrible fury of the atom for the first time. That was the date of the first atomic detonation in human history. The man shown previously, Robert Oppenheimer, was a key leader of the Manhattan Project, the U.S. effort that developed the bomb. In fact, he is often referred to as the father of the atomic bomb. The haunted look you see in Oppenheimer's eyes is a man struggling with the, em with the ethical implications of his own work. This video was recorded well after the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, Oppenheimer had had time to fully realize and consider the impact of his work. He lived to see the aftermath of the, of the bombings, as well as the later arms race that saw the development of weapons of such power they made what he called the destroyer of worlds look like nothing. Now, the point of, of me bringing up Oppenheimer is not to rehash the ethical debate uh, on the use of the bomb during World War II. That conflict was a never-ending parade of abominable horror, atrocity after atrocity after atrocity. The atomic bombings were just an exclamation point on this long, endless list of unspeakable nightmares. My point is that the work of engineers and scientists, especially in the modern age, are fundamentally inseparable from deep ethical considerations. Oppenheimer realized this. Whether justified or not in the grand scheme of history, he held himself to some extent personally responsible for the 200,000 men, women, and children incinerated by the weapons he had helped to create. It haunted him till the end of his days. While civil and structural engineers usually aren't involved much in nuclear weapons design, they still have an immense ethical burden placed on their shoulders. As a structural engineer, you are holding the lives of people in your hands. If what you design fails, people can and will be killed or maimed for life. You must always remember this and carry this responsibility with you in all that you do as a structural engineer.